To red teapot. Um, I threw the parts separately. The, this part is thrown as one piece, and then I threw the parts and assembled them. And I wanted a semi anthropomorphic feel, and it uh, wanted to feel more like it was not just a teapot, but it had a um, personality or almost a life itself, like it was almost animal. Well, um, I had never made a teapot before, and Kevin said he wanted to do a teapot show. And I was thinking, I was thinking about wild goats because I'd been drawing at uh, the zoo in Los Angeles and I'd been working on the markor. And this is a markor, actually. And um, it's, a, it's a composite of two of them because the, the horns are shorter than the one I was drawing there. And, you know, goats uh, stick their tongues out a lot, so that started as, as a tongue and then it came out green, so I thought, well, perhaps it's a leaf or a cigar. Who knows? <laughs> I was going to wreck, I was going to fire it with a with a glaze in the in the kiln, and then uh, one of my kids, the biggest one, was there, so I thought, hey, we can raku it. It's a little heavy for me, and we did. And what I was pleased with is the fact that the uh, the crackle actually matches, and the nose came out copper, which I was hoping for, but you know you can't count on anything with raku, and the spout is obvious, but then here's half the lid, and you can actually pour water through. And it comes out the uh, spout. So anyway, my first teapot, and, and I was really totally happy with it. posed a problem for me, and that was uh, creating a, a, something beyond the teapot and in a very short time. So this was a real challenge for me because I'm a very slow person. But this worked into my um, series I've been um, involved in with the, over the past year, and that is the Mayan culture, and in particular their sensors, which were vessels used for burning the blood-soaked uh, uh, hemp rope or whatever they were using to collect the blood from the nobles to burn to the gods. And so I was very interested in them uh, and I decided to try to create a teapot use going with this same series. So uh, this front uh, loosely represents the Mayan censer um, and the back is uh, reflects uh, nature and uh, even though it's it's not uh, a tea leaf I felt like the leaves represented tea leaves and the red berries um, so it's nature based and um, it has the suggestion of a lid and it definitely has a spout and a handle and uh, this is much more colorful than I usually go. So this was something new and different for me to create a teapot.
uh, Kevin Wallace asked me to participate in the teapot show. I thought it would be fun to honor the teapot uh, with the, f the, the figure and the vessel. And one of the earliest times in my life that I thought of the, f the figure as a vessel was when I learned I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Um, so I, uh, the more I got into this, everybody I knew knew this song. It was, I realized this was, the, even in other countries they know this song. And um, I asked my students to help participate. And I have students from Harvard here and the Boston Museum School and the Warren Clay Works. And they're all singing and, and working on their work in a clay environment while they're working. And um, it, it's an interactive piece here. singing and there's they're all building these humongous sculptures with of the, of the figure and I have the model in the background that we're using and she's also the the teapot which there's all kinds of little nuances going on in here I particularly like the the fact that they're working on big figures like this piece of mine um, while they're singing the song this is um, my grandfather teapot, and my grandfather was a L. Waters the Great, L. Waters the Great, and he was a professional magician, and he played for Houdini, and he was from Europe, and were, he's, he was wonderful. I never met him, but I have pictures of him, so I, I took a photograph with his piercing eyes and his hat and his rabbits. Uh, no, I, I didn't see the rabbit, excuse me, but his car tricks, and I just did a... Uh, two teapots, and this is one of them. And I enjoyed doing it. It made me very nostalgic for my history. Yeah. And this is a, a figurative uh, teapot I did. Uh, I was, did a series of heads on heads, and this was very appropriate. And I don't know if it comes off. And it has a little handle and a spout. And it, I have enjoyed doing the teapot too. So. Yeah, very figurative. Uh, other than what I was telling you, Kevin, other than the fact that, that I throw this in one piece and was this was part of that thing where I was uh, throwing clay from the wall, pulling it out, uh, this is all one piece all the way up to here, done one piece, and then I add multiple flutes and the rest, the handle, and as normal. This, the concept was for, I originally made it for the, with the design to send off to uh, Norman Schwarzkopf, hence the name Storm and Norman, and the idea of it being a, a camouflaged uh, tank, but functioning as a teapot. Um, and, and it works quite well, actually. Not as a tank, of course. And the use of this, trying to come up with a handle that I felt fit uh, the concept of the, the pot, the mechanicalness, all this, instead of having a wooden handle or a bamboo handle, something rather typical, I decided to use uh, just a coat hanger and wrap the coat hanger around a broomstick and create these handles and started a whole thing off of that so it does the same thing. And they, they kind of lend themselves well, almost like an antenna or something electronic or mechanical that goes with the piece at the same time. It doesn't take away from it so much and they're very functional. They can't get hot, and there's a flexibility in the handle, so they actually have a little give that's kind of nice to pour with. This had more to do with just play. I was just playing, uh, more the kid in me, and the idea of uh, rockets and, a, and a, something toy-like and playful that way that was reminiscent to my to, uh, feelings as a kid, and still being functional as a teapot. <clears throat> and the flash of... of uh, the reds going through almost like it's being burned or flashing through space or 
moving at high speed, and the little gun and the rockets and the bombs and stuff and the little ports and bit. But still, again, holding true to the the idea of it being very, very functional and quite usable. That's what we could have talked about.